why, but there you go. Something about the Walking Dead, I'll just tell you that. Among other things. Ah, all right, so you guys know me. Can you believe this? Seven years now. Seven years since we came down from Washington, even though I'm from here, but came down from Washington and uh, we had this all set up. We had a Hawaii trip that we booked even before the ability to move to Arizona popped into play. Came back from that trip five days before Phoenix Comic Con and I found out, congratulations, you're opening up against Leonard Nimoy on his farewell tour. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's it. I'm never going to get asked back to another convention again and we absolutely had the room filled beyond capacity. Next year we came back and it was William Shatner and I'm like, seriously guys? <laughs> seriously, we filled that too. So that's really good. I think that's wonderful. And as my wife likes to say, you know, I'm constantly amazed at so many people when I hear you. And I said, well, just be grateful you get for free every single day. And she's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but, but we won't even, uh, we won't get to that. So anyway, uh, we're talking about the movies of 2018 through 2020 and with a little tease into 2021. Anyone want to take a guess what next year's panel is going to be called? <laughs> Movies of 2019 through 2022. So there you go. You heard it here first. Take that. <laughs> Who said you don't get explosives at your panels here? <clears throat> so, and of course, by all means, come out and check. Hey, see you all. Very good. <laughs> We're still season ticket holders. <laughs> and no, I didn't spike the Gatorade. <laughs> I should have, but... <clears throat> so we're going to start off with the rumors. We're going to start off with the fun stuff. As usual, I have at least two hours worth of material. We have one hour to do it. So we'll whip through it. If you have questions anytime over the weekend, uh, just come up and ask me at the table. And we'll go from there. Uh, literally right outside the door. You can't miss it. We'll pack it up about 6.30ish tonight, and we'll be back out tomorrow until 6. Um, a lot of rumors, a lot of crazy stuff. First one that I'm really proud to announce, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and James Cameron are reteaming for Terminator The Apology. <laughs> now, <clears throat> this is how it's going to work. They had planned three films for Terminator Genesis in that cycle before the rights go back to James Cameron. He lost the rights after Terminator 2, Hence why he hasn't been involved with any of the subsequent films. The rights are going back to him. Now, James, other than being down at Disney, and by the way, uh, World of Pandora reached capacity. They had to shut the doors of the Wild Animal Kingdom today because the response to the movie everybody hated has been so phenomenally huge. Same thing in California Adventure with the uh, Guardians thing, too. The record capacity for that one. But, you know, hey, nobody cares about Marvel, right? That's why they're going to be announcing Marvel Land not too soon. But that's another story, D23 Expo. Um, rights go back to James Cameron. So the plan is uh, James is busy getting Avatar 2, 3, and 4 ready. And uh, the rights are coming back to him. So he's writing a story with someone else. Uh, there's going to be a different director. Schwarzenegger has said he's back. And the plan is one more movie, tell the story, done. Essentially, I'm guessing they're going to pretend the others never happened and it's going to, you know, go from there. But this is going to be James Cameron, official stamp finale. This is the end of the, the story. So we'll see how that plays out. A lot of, a lot of rumors right now. Uh, obviously, as we all know, July, you got D23 Expo, who decided with their biannual convention. Um, we're not going to go in August like we always do. We're going to go in July, four days before San Diego Comic Con, which is going to make sorry, it's going to make our travel schedule an absolute nightmare. We have three trips to California within three weeks, so yay! You're going to be seeing that corridor really well. But anyway, a lot of stuff you're going to be expecting to see. For example, a lot of people expect you may see the first footage for Wreck and Ralph 2, Ralph Wrecks the Internet. You will be possibly seeing the first footage for uh, The Incredibles 2, all of which are in active development. You will possibly see the first new footage for Mulan, which is not the musical. So, no figure. 
Uh, you'll be seeing a lot of the other live actions. I mean, obviously there's going to be a Jungle Book sequel coming, but I, I don't think they're quite ready to go that route. But swinging the other way around from Wholesome Disney Family Entertainment, we have something called Insidious 4. Because like paranormal activity, as long as you keep buying tickets, we're going to keep making them. That's the studio's <laughs> mentality. Hence why you thought it was done, there will be a new Saw movie coming out in the not too distant future. <laughs> it was all a dream, Jigsaw lives. <laughs> now, um, Maze Runner Death Cure is coming. The unfortunate onset accident, I'm sure you guys know about this, but one of the actors was run over. Took a little longer to rehab than they expected, but he is back and they're going to be releasing that soon. Uh, Fifty Shades Freed? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I remember watching that one in the sequel and I, I like said to my wife, I said, I, I don't get it. She said, you want to know something? I said, yeah. She says, these are actually better than the books. I go, really? <laughs> and, and that tells you something as, as bad as these things are. Um, you know about Black Panther, I mean, nothing new here. Pacific, right, Pacific Rim Uprising. Yeah. A Wrinkle in Time, okay, that sounds oh, alright. And you got Robin Hood, another one, yay. Yeah. <laughs> Willie Wear Tights, Willie Wear, Kevin Eng English accent. And then we get to the, uh, we just did the radio segment on this on KSW. I put it on the site if anybody wants to hear the more in-depth version. I'm really curious to see how this plays out. How many of you know about the Dark Universe or the Dark Horizon or what Universal's doing right now? Universal has decided they're going to basically try to do what Marvel has done with the cinematic universe of superheroes with their classic monsters. And this is all coming to a head with the mummy. So here's what you've got. You've got the mummy with Tom Cruise and you also have Russell Crowe playing Dr. Jekyll. Anyone think that name sounds familiar? Yeah. You also have some guy named Johnny Depp playing the Invisible Man. You have Javier Bardem playing Frankenstein the Monster. So the plan is you're going to see a bunch of these movies. Now, remember, this can go all go off the rail of the mummy bombs. But the plan is you're all going to see a series of these movies, which are updated tales of the universal classic monsters involving these characters who will come in and out of the other movies. And they will expand them as time goes on. And of course, we'll get once we get through all these, we will definitely get to the questions. Um, so I'm curious to see how that plays out. The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, Baywatch, cheesy, stupid, fun. And they're already planning a sequel. He's busy doing the arcade game Rampage. Any of you guys remember that one? Yeah. Well, they're filming the movie right now, so look forward to that. Some, something called the Avengers, Infinity War, no one cares about that, so we won't talk about that. Uh, the Han Solo film, you know, that's going on. That's another one at D23 Expo that we expect to see some first footage from that. Uh, how many of you guys have ever been to the D23 Expo? If you haven't had a chance, it's actually fantastic. Now, one of the things to do, as I said, it's every two years, and I. One of the things they do, and th this is like the great thing, first time we went to it, they brought the press in and seated us. The second time, two years later, we had to stand in line and we managed to get in the overflow room. Last time we went, people were camped out all night, we had no chance unless you got cherry picked to go in. Because what happens is, they come out, Marvel, uh, excuse me, Disney Studios, and like Alan Hornhead will come out and they'll say, okay, boom, here's Lucasfilm, and they come out, this is what we've got coming in the next two years. Marvel comes out. This is what we've got coming in the next two years, the live action, and then they bring the stars out. Now, to give you an idea of just how big it is, uh, you guys remember Captain America Winter Soldier? Yeah. They came out, and, hey, you know, we got this, we're filming this Captain America Winter Soldier. Here's a scene that we filmed just this week. You have to surrender all your phones and electronics before you even get into this thing. So you go in there, they showed a scene that they had only filmed two to three days before, that was the tanker scene. And they're like, we apologize, they still have temporary effects. So then we, they showed us the elevator scene, remember where it was clanked to the wall? And they go, ladies and gen gentlemen, Anthony Mackie, Chris Evans, blah, 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 bring them right out there, and then they show us another scene. And that's how it goes on. Al Angelina Jolie, first time we saw her in, in her Maleficent makeup, she came out. Natalie Portman, all of them, boom, 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 all the way down the line. I remember when Avengers came out, they had 90%, 80% of the cast right there. And so that's why it's so big because this is when they make their first reveal. Mm -hmm. 
And a lot of times it's the first time you hear about the films, first time you see it, first time we saw Guardians of the Galaxy. They introduced the lineup footage, all of that. The trailers and everything they show, they don't even put out for months at a time. Well, now they're being really sneaky, and they're coming out four days before Comic-Con because we believe they've got some serious bombs to drop, and they don't want any other studio doing that, which would possibly be... In addition to the young Han Solo footage, you probably might see another trailer for that uh, Star Wars film that no one cares about coming. And we also can tell you for a fact they're going to announce what the 2020 standalone film is very soon. The one that Josh Crank was supposed to do before he fired or was left or whatever you call it. So that's kind of why it's a big deal. So you get back to this and you have Deadpool 2. We all know Deadpool 2 is in the works. Yay, Deadpool. Uh, you got Ocean 8, which essentially, you know, the Ocean's 11, Ocean 12, all that. This is an all-female version of it, of a, of a heist film. And, of course, it's going to have the all-star cast, Sandra Bullock, and things like that. Um, there's supposed to be a Bumblebee standalone film, providing the last night does all right. Uh, you know about The Incredibles 2? They're over in London right now filming Jurassic World 2 at the Licensing Expo in Vegas last week. They've already ramped up the licensing for that. So I think that'll, you know, that'll be fun. Uh, the Barbie movie, still on, still on, even though uh, Schumer dropped out of it. Uh, they still are planning on it. Now this one I'm really, really curious about, and the funny thing is I'm not going to get political here, but, you know, we may get into a gray area on that. When the last one came out, my wife was like, you know, this is kind of getting uncomfortable because it's not so unreasonable as it was with the first film. And then we went to Halloween Horror Nights and did that, and then they said, oh yeah, we got a TV series in the works based on it, it's going to follow multiple characters on this, and oh yeah, we also have a fourth movie in the Purge series coming. And it's like, yeah, so, what, government sanctioned removal of undesirables? <laughs> nah, uh, yeah, it's a little, and so what they're going to do with the new series is they're going to delve on certain people, and it's going to carry rather, you know, certain people over the night, kind of like a, a, kind of like a 10, 13 episode series, but there'll also be a fourth film. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. Ant-Man and the Wasp, you know about. How many of you know about this thing called The Predator? Yeah. All right. So we got a new Predator movie in the works, and I'm really interested how this plays out, because Shane Black, who played Hawkins in the original film, who went on to be a very accomplished writer and director, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Iron Man 3, had his hand in some of the Lethal Weapon films. He has co-written this movie and he's directing it. So essentially, a guy who's very invested in the franchise, very passionate about it. Uh, and I can tell you what it's about. And it's not about a bunch of predators just hunting rogue humans. Tom James in it, it's got an interesting cast. You remember in the Robert Rodriguez version, you had that really kind of offshoot predator race? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's just say the more classic predators are actually working with humans to fight this greater threat. And the footage I saw, the or footage, this, the images I was sent, at first I was like, no way, they're just horsing around on camera. There was an armored personnel vehicle filled with soldiers, and there were two predators, and they were wearing military camouflage. <laughs> and I said, yeah. And then that's when I heard, oh yeah, they're working with the humans now to fight an even greater threat. Uh -huh. I was like, this could work. <laughs> this could work. I, I would not want to be the quartermaster trying to explain to a predator that's the only size that camel, those camel pants come in. But, you know, <laughs> that's, they're like, sure, I'll watch that. Why not? Um, Scarface, they're doing a remake of that. No, say hello to my little friend. I can't wait to see how that plays out. Now, my son is an absolute, um, he, he's like, yeah, he's almost, well, he's, he's in his 20s, I'll leave it that way. And, uh, yes, uh, so he's big on sharks, really big on sharks. He actually wanted to go into uh, oceanography. And uh, he's really passionate about this movie coming out called Meg based on the very popular book series, and he's extremely frustrated because it keeps getting delayed. Jason Statham, and it's going to come out next year. They had originally said February of 2018, but now it looks like it's going to be saved till next summer. It's basically, you know, a simplified way. It's not entirely accurate, but for the, for the sake of argument, think of a prehistoric great white shark. Bigger, nastier, stronger. 
long thought extinct for millions of years. And uh, let's say that's no longer the case and one of them gets loose. And we have absolutely nothing to prepare ourselves for how you combat something like that. And that's basically what we got. So I'm like, no, you know, Statham's going to get in there and white man grunt and growl and smack it out. And let's not forget, he used to be an Olympic diver, so the guy's all set for this, you know. <laughs> People don't remember that. He started his career as an Olympic diver. So, yeah. Um, so, Equalizer 2, Denzel Washington <coughs> taking home improvement matters into his own hand. I still think that was one of the best sequences ever, but you'll be seeing that. There'll be a Goosebumps sequel. And you all remember, you've all heard the story about Venom, I'm sure, how we've got, we've got Tom Hardy being Venom. And I thought, great, now here's another movie where we're going to have to get subtitles because we can't hear him speak clearly. But you know. uh, Now, this one here I'm really, really, really interested in. This I thought, wow, this is going to be interesting. Danny McBride, no relation. Um, people ask me that. We want people to know my you know, real family. They're like, no, I see we're not related. But... Uh, has a really interesting project coming out. And I'm like, this this really intrigues me. And no, it's not a follow-up to Alien Covenant. Um, he, uh, they want to do the Halloween film, uh, the series of, they want to continue it, but they believe that the sequels after John Carpenter's second one really got way out there. And the Rob Zombie one kind of got. And so the rights holders said, we're going to bring John Carpenter back to produce and oversee this. He's not going to direct, to direct it, but we want to bring him in. And we want fresh ideas. We want a fresh take on the Halloween franchise that is respectful to the source material. And you have to pitch it to John Carpenter because he's the one that's going to decide whether it moves forward or not. And you have to sell him. And if he sells it, then he'll bring it to the studio. There you go. Well. Danny McBride and his writing partner apparently had an idea, absolutely blew John Carpenter away and said, done. Done deal. They apparently, he said, this, this is the freshest take on the Halloween material since the original. Apparently they found a way to be respectful to the source material. And so, you know, don't know any details on it, but they said that the John Carpenter was blown away, the studio was blown away. They said this is just an incredibly solid, fresh, way to move the franchise forward, but still. So you'll be seeing a new Halloween film in the not too distant future. Now, you've heard me mention the Jungle Book, and uh, we actually are gonna have another Jungle Book movie. Did you guys ever hear about the dueling rights issues that are going on right now? You know how Disney has the Jungle Book and the John Farlow one, and they're working on a sequel to that? Well, there were also, there's also a Warner Brothers version that was in production. And they, for whatever reason, either needed more time or decided, you know what, we're not going to release ours right up against the other one. So you should be seeing that in a too distant future. Uh, X-Men Dark Phoenix. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we already mentioned Mulan. They're redoing The Grinch. Yes, we need more Christmas films, right? I, I, I'm old-fashioned, but I, I'd like another. Uh, I, I'd like what they did with Vacation, where it followed his son. Now let's see a Christmas version of one of those. I think. Yeah, just if you're gonna if you're gonna do Christmassy things and not follow something fresh, which would be ideal. Um, this is one of those I'll believe it when I see it things, but they are supposedly gonna do Bad Boys for Life. That thing has been on and off so many times. It's literally I'm at the point where if the cameras start rolling, then I'll believe it. Fantastic Beasts 2, I suppose it's no secret that that's coming. There's several films in the series, and they're in pre-production on that. Uh, Wreck-It Ralph 2, we mentioned. Ralph wrecks the internet. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory what's going to happen with that. There is an animated Spider-Man film in the works. And, uh, of course, you know James Wan, who got his start directing Saw, believe it or not, and has moved on quite well for himself. He's directing, he's currently filming Aquaman, as you probably heard. Now, then there's this whole issue of Mary Poppins Returns. Really curious to see how that one goes out, because here, here's my big question. And if any of you saw Dick Van Dyke, I haven't heard from our person who covered it today. Did he bring up Mary Poppins at all? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, Here's my question. 
Travers was very clear there is no way in hell, even had put into her will, will another film based on Mary Poppins ever be allowed to happen. I'm curious how this one did. Is, was it just simply that enough time passed that the rights were no longer an issue or what? Because I had heard she was just like flat out insisting that in her will, it was, there will never be another book, anything done on the Mary Poppins material because she was just that, you know, we, you remember the movie and the whole experience about that. So I, I'm really curious. I would love to know what the backstory about why now, why were they were finally able now after all this time to do it. You know, I don't know whether it's some heir somewhere down the line said, yeah, yeah, that's all nice, Grandma, but I, you know, I had to use this check, so yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> kind of like uh, just diverse, really quick statistics. Did you you know about Star Wars Land and all the big expansions of Disney? Disney was actually able to get a hold of two hotels right outside the gate, and this never happens. Nobody gives up any property out there because it's like the primal real estate. And they hand it down from generation to generation. Well, one hotel, basically, the grandkids said, you know, we really don't want to run a hotel. Don't really, and Disney's like $24 million. And they said, oh, yeah, that works. <laughs> and then once that happened and it was all set, and they, of course, said, you know, we're going to keep it running for a while and we'll eventually go to some new entryways and they, they're going to help the staff get new jobs and stuff within the company or elsewhere. One of the other hotels said, hey, we're, 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 we're willing to sell too. And you're like, okay, we'll let the check over done. So, you know, it's interesting to see how the younger generation, you know, cash in hand rather than long term. But the whole advantage is you're going to see big expansions to Disneyland and California Adventure, which is also going to tie into some of these things. Like, for example, we've been told, eh, you're going to see, you're going to hear an announcement of a Marble Land not too soon in the future that's supposed to be right behind Cars Land, which is amazing how these movies that weren't the biggest hits at all for Pixar, but yet the attractions are massive, they just the draw of those. So we did Mary Poppins, we talked about the Lego movie. Um, you know, there's an untitled Fox movie at Marvel. We're still waiting to see what that is. Uh, we talked about the Universal Monsters. There's How to Train Your Dragon 3, Captain Marvel, Godzilla King of the Monsters, part of the big monster verse, which is eventually going to lead to a Godzilla King Kong standoff. Shazam. Uh, Fast and Furious 9 and 10. Yeah. And you see how much money these Why? things make. Yeah, it's like, trust me, if you have, if you, you know, we all sit there and laugh, and then you go, oh my goodness, it made over a billion dollars? Sure, here's, here's 200 million, go make another, and another, and another, and another, because, yeah, when you get that kind of return, you're going to keep making these things forever, because it's uh, Star Wars 9, we know about, Minecraft, like, you know, I, I, I asked, and I got in trouble with my rep, I said, so is this Minecraft going to be running? rendered in 8-bit graphics and blocky. <laughs> and I said, because how do you do this? You either do it 8-bit graphics and blocky or you make it state-of-the-art 3D and everyone's going to say that's not Minecraft. So, you know, just like when they were trying to do the Tetris movie. And by the way, there, you remember a couple of years ago, I'm hoping Calmer has prevailed, they went nuts and decided they auctioned all these film rights for various video games. And there was like Asteroids, Space Invader, Missile Command, um, I was just sitting there going down the list going, yeah. and I think, I think that Adam Sandler movie, where he had to go up against the various ones, I think that kind of killed the enthusiasm for that when they said, you know, this one didn't do very well in the box office. And, huh? Correct. And so, because I know this, uh, you got Toy Story 4. Yeah. Transformers 6. The Secret Life of Pets. <laughs> Believe it or not, this one's already announced, Spider-Man Homecoming 2. <laughs> now again, it takes at the box office, that derails all this, because remember they also announced The Amazing Spider-Man 3, until someone decided to get really creative with the casting, and certain cast members decided to open their mouth on the PR tour, and instead of saying, hey, it's great, it's wonderful, go see it, decided to air their dirty laundry. That's basically what killed the Andrew Garfield series. So, um, uh, untitled, I, I, would, I love this one. They send me a press release for this. I'm, they go, hey, make sure you include this one in your panel. <laughs> Kid you not, 
Untitled Warner Brothers event movie. I'm like, wow, that's really going to give me a lot of stuff. I go, so what do we got here? Asteroids, earthquakes, volcanoes, you know, aliens. More details to come. I go, well, there you go. I mean, hey, I, I just got everything you need right there. The Lion King live action. I, I'm still waiting to see how this live action Lion King is going to work. <laughs> it's going to be like the plays when they're all wearing throw ropes and stilts and everything like that. And CGI all the animals, and I'm like, well, what exactly is going to be live action in the, animal, in the Lion King? Because I'm like, I don't remember any non-animal parts in that. You know what? That's the beauty of Hollywood. They'll figure out, they'll find a way to do it. Case in point, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. We'll get to the questions at the end. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Um, busy man, a lot of stuff going on. Um, he's doing, and I, 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 I'm all for this. You know, uh, pirates kind of is winding down a little bit. Um, they are going to be doing a movie based on the Jungle Cruise. Dwayne Johnson has announced it. Everyone's happy. Disney confirmed it. Dwayne came out and said, yes, and uh, I'm going to be personally overseeing a remodel of the Jungle Cruise attractions to tie it into the film. <laughs> and he had a picture of him next to the map holding it like this. And uh, our reps at Disney said, well, he may be enthusiastic about the project, but we had zero plans to change that classical attraction. Uh -huh. You know. By the way, if you haven't had a chance, go there at Christmas time when they turn into the Jingle Cruise. Uh -huh. It is fantastic. <laughs> they, they, uh, classic ride, but there's like holiday decorations in various settings. <laughs> the tour changes, and the boats all have Christmassy and Hanukkah-related names, <laughs> and it, it's 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 a lot of fun. And. Uh, and so you'll be seeing that. Uh, we mentioned uh, the Untitled Warner event film. Mm -hmm. And then there's this little thing called Frozen 2. <laughs> <laughs> that the public absolutely demanded that they have no plans to move a sequel anywhere in soon because you can say what you want about not Pixar but Disney themselves. Don't do a lot of sequels to the animated films. They had that time when they were doing the direct to video ones. Public absolutely demanded a follow up to Frozen. They just two years they kept. So now we got a Frozen. So we have that and we have Wicked. We also have Masters of the Universe, another one that I would leave it when the cameras start to move. So then we get to 2020, and I don't mean the talk show with Hugh Downs. Um, dating myself with that one. Trolls 2. Yeah. Yes, Timberlake can't stop the feeling. That's for sure. <laughs> it's like, you know what? Give us a new song. If you give, you can give us, you give us a theme song half as catchy as that'll be all right. I haven't seen the movie yet, but love, love the song. Um, Godzilla vs. Kong. We talked about Minions Two. And by the way, I don't know if you're aware, the studio tracking for Despicable Me Three is off the charts. They're expecting a massive hit with this one. But, you know, those, those minions. I mean, <laughs> you know. um, and then Harrison Ford returns in Indiana Jones 5. <laughs> and this is the part where I get in trouble for making a comment about, so Indy's getting Social Security? <laughs> Sponsored by Metamucil? <laughs> But, you know what? And you know, and I'll be the first one here watching it. <laughs> now, what I'm curious about though is Harrison Ford, Steven Spielberg. That much we know. There's the missing element. We're told no George Lucas. <laughs> then we're told, oh yeah, George is involved. He's got his hand in the story. Then we're told no George isn't involved. <laughs> so I'm really curious to see what's going to happen at the end of the day. You know, George is officially, you know, he's officially, he's retired, which is rather interesting because I don't know if you're aware, but when they do these Star Wars movies, they still, uh, like for example, World One, they brought him by and were like, you know, showed him the props, showed him all the stuff, and now uh, the directors have all said, you know, they always want to, do you like this, what do you think of this? I mean, obviously it's still their films and he's not saying, you can't do that, you have to do this, but... 
Uh, Gareth Edwards was very big on, no, you know, we, of course we go to George. When they were doing episode seven, apparently some of the sketches, even though they chose not to use the storylines, they said they would show vehicle sketches and stuff to him, and he'd be like, this is good, except, no, there wouldn't be wheels, you'd be anti-gravity and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it's kind of an interesting thing. For a retired guy, they still, mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I think that it's, you know, doesn't hurt any, any time. For the, I mean, look, say what you want about the writing, say what you want about the directing, the, the, the visuals were always there. And, it, you know, you want to get him to zip it around and say, do this, do that? More, more power to you. Uh, we mentioned Avatar 2, 3, and 4. Yes, the Avatar, um, we've been told the water, and a, uh, they've announced that a, an actor will be playing the leader of an aquatic species. Um, I don't know if you've seen any of the footage for the new uh, motion ride at uh, Disney World about Avatar. Many scenes of them flying on the mounts that go whipping right down near the water and through the water and up and through the canyons and back down into the water again. We were told that James Cameron, who as you know likes to do diving and submersibles, has got a state-of-the-art submersible that um, he's outfitting with the latest generation of 3D cameras and they're going to be doing underwater filming apparently. That's part of the reason why for the delays. They're also going to take the 3D, not this most of the films converted to 3D nonsense, proper filmed in 3D, the higher frame rates like they did at The Hobbit, they're going to be taking that technology even further for the new Avatar films. Because the whole mantra was, everybody has said, and they, we keep hearing this at the new attractions, the moment the ride ends, the moment the movie ended and people had to go out of that world into the real world, they said, so many people said they had a disappointment, it was hard to go back to reality after being in that fantasy world, so they want to take it to the level of immersion even further. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about the new Screen X projects and stuff like that. It's essentially movie screens where they have two other ones off to the side, and the new Pirates of the Caribbean movie is going to be shown in that format for theaters that can do that. They have 4D theaters that are catching on. They're really popular in New York right now. If you want to pay $20 plus to see a movie, it's your choice. Um, now, if we, we, when we get into 2020, we have the untitled Disney live-action film, and I'm like, why do you even send me this? What am I going to do with untitled Disney live-action film? Uh, we, you know, we talked about Indiana Jones, and then, of course, you get all these crazy rumors, like this is Disney's release. You know, I, lo I love this one. August 7th, 20, 2020, I'm like, okay, prime time summer, we're pleased to announce untitled Marvel movie in 3D. I'm like, oh, that's going to get me excited. Uh, but then you get... Uh, something called Gigantic, and I'm like, all right, I can live with this. But, you know, you go down the line, uh, Untitled Disney Live Action, Untitled Pixar, and we did promise 2021, so I am going to tell you uh, what you can expect in 2021. This is your one one freebie ahead of next year's panel. Boss Baby 2. Oh. <laughs> you have any idea how much that thing made? <laughs> I sat there and I looked at it. I have not had a chance to see it, although I did see his panel. It was a uh, it was an unannounced panel at uh, Comic-Con last year in Hall H. I, you know, people camp out for Saturday and such, but on Thursdays you can often just walk by and get into the end. And I'm walking by and they go, uh, no, no waiting, sir, no waiting. And I said, well, we've got three hours or so until my first interview. What, what have we got? And he goes, uh, we got trolls. So it was Anna Kendrick and Justin Timberlake. And then right after that, we had... Um, Oliver Stone came out and did Snowden and all that, and they go, oh, we have a special guest, and Alec Baldwin and his first Comic-Con appearance came out and debuted Boss Baby, and I thought, no, oh, this could be good. And then you see the money it made, and you're like, okay, so <laughs> let's get to the questions. I know you've got a bunch of them, and we've got about 25 minutes, so let's have it. Go, yes? What happened to Ready Tier One? Development limo, I guess would be the easiest way to uh, describe it. Nothing. Nothing at this time. Now, mind you, that can all change in a moment's notice because I remember a studio exec told me one thing. He said, I've seen done deals fall apart over a studio executive. He said, literally found his potatoes to be undercooked at lunch and canceled the done deal. He said, so, you know, nothing's really easy. The, the, the rule of thumb is, like I said, when the cameras start rolling, that means money's being spent not just on a writer, that's when they're fully invested and that's when you see it, but there are, have been plenty of films that have been shot and never released too, so, but nothing on that. Uh, yeah, you've been waiting, go ahead. 
We'll start, we'll do yours and then yours. Go ahead. Go ahead in the back. No, it's right there. Yeah, shoot. Yes. So, have, have major studios given up on original material? Oh. Original stories? Yeah, here's, here's the bottom line. The question was, have they given up on original stories? The answer is yes. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Let's take the Alien Covenant, for example. $97 million is what their production cost. That was cheap. They spent a reported $56 million in advertising and promotion. So let's say $156, $160 million before they break even. Now, only one Alien film. Now, and when you consider the first two films in the franchise are absolute iconic films. Only one Alien film has ever topped $100 million in the U.S. That was Prometheus, which had the advantage of A, Many years removed from the cycle, Ridley Scott returning, the promise of filling in questions people had, and also significantly higher ticket prices in 3D. So, they're currently sitting at about 130 something million dollars, 134 million worldwide as of this morning. They need probably about 180 to 200 million to guarantee the next film to go forward. Now, they can make that up DVD pay per view. Their only big market still remaining is China. China is now the biggest movie market in the world. They only allow so, so many films per year from foreign markets into that audience. That's why you see in movies like Baywatch, for example, there is a Chinese character in the film. They bring in a Chinese production company. Because this guarantees you opening there. You take films there, I think it was like The Last Resident Evil. Didn't do very well. Absolutely cleaned up in China. So much so, the studio said, well, you know, we said this is the last one. Forget that. We're rebooting the franchise. Why? Because it's very simple. Kaboom translates to every language on the planet. <laughs> Sequels work very well overseas. Because remember, the U.S. is no longer the be-all and end-all of the box office. It used to be that was it, and whatever you got in Europe was a bonus. Not anymore. Right now, the number one person they look at outside of the U.S. is China. That's the box office goal. You've got to get your film into China. And you better, and you have all these others. So what do they want? Sequels. They don't want things with complicated plots. Those get confused in translation. Action films, stars. Comedies don't work too well in the foreign market because they get lost in translation. Dramas, action films. So what do you do? Well. Let's just crank this one out and crank this one out. And you know what? They're safer because production costs are going higher and higher. You know, you look at this Valerian movie that's coming out. It's going to be a tough sell. It'll do okay overseas, but not many people know the material. Now, you take something like that and you go, Valerian, Fifth Element, Part 2. <laughs> people are going to go, oh, I know the Fifth Element. Oh, hey, there's Bruce Willis. I want to see that. That's the, that's the whole idea. It's, it's too much of a risk because as a studio executive told me, I'd rather make 10 pieces of garbage and make money than one film that sweeps the Oscars because that's the film that's going to get me fired. That's the one that's not going to make a gigantic box office return. My job is to put butts in the seat. Quality and all that, that's great. It doesn't mean anything if the money, if the money, if cash registers are not ringing and the audience has been very clear. We don't want to think too much. We do, that's what DVDs, that's what Netflix is for. We want simple, straightforward stories. This is the good guy, this is the bad guy, lots of action, give us a twist, and if it's preferably something we've seen before, we know what to expect, so we're not gonna have to get nervous uh, because prices are going up and we can't go to the number of movies and oh yeah, you know what, we're just gonna wait and watch it on Netflix, and that's the problem. They wanna get you in the theater, so. Yes, and just here, sorry. Go ahead. Just real quickly, whatever happened to the Chronicles of Narnia? Did they stop at the... Uh, you know, that, that's a great question. Thank you for bringing that up. The question was Chronicles of Narnia. Here's what I, I know of it. About six months ago, we heard a rumor that it's still in play, but it's kind of a... Uh, I guess the kindest way to put it would be they're kicking the tires. It's, we're not committed to doing it, we're not moving forward, but we're not saying we're done and not doing it. We're kind of just looking for the right opportunity. 
So limbo, essentially. It's if, if Essentially, it's one of those, if the right script comes in at a friendly budget, then it'll move forward. Uh, yeah? Um, so in the gaming part, you mentioned that you have a Thing yes. Tie in with the movie yeah, that's basically Tom Holland, who's Spider-Man, has been cast as young Nathan Drake <coughs> in the Uncharted film, so it looks like it is moving forward finally after numerous starts and stops. Yes. Toy Story 4 storyline. Uh, rumor is the little girl's older. <laughs> that's basically it. that's supposed to be revealed in D23. That's the rumor. Yeah, I'll come over there now. <laughs> Ghost in the Shell, I heard it tanked here. Big time. Not enough to justify moving forward. <laughs> okay, so no Because you got to remember, overseas wasn't too impressed with the casting choices to begin with either. Okay. Now, do, do you think the Chinese are going to be openly embracing Scarlett Johansson? <laughs> do you think the Japanese will be openly embracing that? Star Trek's pretty much dead right now. Oh, oh okay, let's for a second. Let me, let me, I, I need to backtrack that. It's, it's a good choice, and there's a reason I didn't bring it up. Here's the situation. You know, obviously, we Star Trek Discovery, we've heard all about that, seen the thing, all that. No, we haven't. No. no. The trailer, it's all over the, the web. You guys, all right, either way, go look it up. The Star Trek Discovery trailer is all over the web, and it's not been well received at all. In fact, the kindest comment I heard was Seth MacFarlane's comedy The Orville looks much more like Star Trek than Star Trek Discovery does. <laughs> so you have this movie. This is what is happening with the movie. Nothing. Simon Pegg is writing a storyline. He has a storyline, he has an outline, he's moving forward with it. Paramount has announced two more Star Trek films. But this is where this is where it gets confused in Hollywood speak. They announced two more Star Trek films before the last one went to the theaters and underperformed. So it's kind of like, well, go ahead and write your script, Simon. Let's see what you got, and uh, let's see how this Star Trek Discovery gets, uh, how the people take to that. Now, based on what I've seen and heard, they're gonna. That series has got an uphill climb at the moment. So they look at Star Trek Beyond and say, wow, this thing didn't make as much money as the one before it, which didn't make as much money as the one before that. We're seeing a downward trend here. So it's kind of a wait and see. They're waiting to, you know, if they get the right script, if it's something that they think is budget friendly, they'll move forward. They're interested in more, but they're not quite ready to pull the trigger and say, absolutely, let's film this thing. So that's, I guess, the best way to describe it. They're keeping the option open. But yes? Uh, two things. Mm -hmm. One, I thought they were going to put Star Trek back on TV. And two, um, after M. Night Shyamalan split the decent, what's he doing there? Uh, he is working on a sequel to Unbreakable. That is one of his, his big projects. Um, Star Trek isn't going on TV. That, well. They will show the premiere episode of Star Trek Discovery on CBS. After that, you have to pay on CBS All Access to watch it via their streaming service. The rest of the world gets to watch it on Netflix, which is part of the problem, because people were not impressed with the trailer, and it's, wait a second, now you want me to pay for another streaming service to watch this thing? I don't think so. So that's, that's a bit of a problem. I'll get to you. Do we have one in the back here or someone? All right, yeah, there you go. I like that. You should pass that around so everybody gets a chance. I was going to say, first of all, on your panel for like, you've been doing your team and I want to ask you, like, uh, seven years now. I know, right? It's scary, huh? You know, maybe we've gotten to seven years ago. I was going to say, wow, a few years ago, you talked about Sony buying the rights, I think it was to Sonic the Hedgehog. Are they still going to do something with that? or Nothing yet, but see, that's a, that's a really good question because every few years these studios get really excited about video game movies and then one of them comes out and does its typical video game movie thing and tanks. Now, <laughs> and and th this is basically it. So you got Angry Birds 2 already announced. Yeah. And you're like, okay. But Ratchet and Clank bombed. And that was a, 
No, because it was a shock to Sony. This was one of their, you know, Ratchet and Clank is a popular series. These games sell. The movies didn't do well. And, and it wasn't overly a bad movie. It was just, it was kind of one of those things that I guess there was nothing to it that inspired people to go pay seven bucks and watch it in the theater. But yet it's something that I guarantee you people are going to scream like crazy. If you play the That's a very good point. Yes. Warcraft tanked in the U.S. It did well overseas, but it scared them off. It did very well overseas, but it, it scared people. Yeah. Any news of more aliens coming out of Covenant? Yeah, well, so, great question. So here's the plan with Covenant. Um, Ridley Scott had originally said, I've got three or four more alien films in me. And he's revised it to about two. He has said that he is ready to go forward with the sequel to Covenant. He said, I'm ready to film within 14 months. The question is, again, we're looking at the box office. Right now, they've lost money on it. But it still has to open in China. Problem is, I don't remember any Chinese characters in the cast, which may hamper the box office. And so... Will it make money? Yeah. I, I, you know, they're about $20 million away from break even right now. It, they should probably do that in the next week or two. The problem is, you also have all these big number people. So again, it's coming to China. It's, I want to say like June 6th or 7th is when it opens in China. And that could be a huge difference because that could be literally, that could be $100 million right there. And all of a sudden, boom, big hit. Prometheus made $400 million worldwide. They're right at $133 million for companies. So you can I thought it was better than, I, I, I liked it better than Resurrection. I certainly liked it better than the two Alien vs. Predator films. Um, I liked it better than major elements of Prometheus, but I think it kind of walked the line that it wasn't quite, I think audiences are jaded, and it's hard to make it as dark and creepy and compelling as the first two films, and I think they're in a very fine line between I don't think you could pace a film like you did with the original Alien for today's audience, but, and I think he did a good job with it moving forward, but it was essentially just a setup for the next film, but I don't know if it was enough to, you know, I think maybe it could have been a little darker, a little longer, but I, I it's, you know, I've seen it twice now, so I certainly enjoyed it, but, uh, yeah. Assassin's Creed? Assassin's Creed is another one, did not do well here, did well overseas, they are planning, um, they are keeping the options open for future films. Now, part of this is going to be they are they're announcing a new Assassin's Creed game. We don't uh, we know for a fact it's going to be announced at E3, and uh, we've been asked uh, to by Ubisoft to come and tour their booth. They haven't told us what we're seeing, but I'm assuming South Park new Assassin's Creed new Far Cry. And so, if the game sells really well, because remember the previous one didn't do as well as they hoped. If the game sells well, you can bet that's going to fast track. Uh, interest in the movie. They are talking about, oh. they are talking about uh, more Sonic stuff. All we know is that Sega has told us that there are announcements pending, and we believe that is going to be, uh, they've, they've shown us footage of a new Sonic game, and they said there will be more details pending. Yeah. <coughs> District 9, uh, you're not going to see a sequel. Uh, basically, Blondkamp, um, Blondkamp had a sequel to Alien set, Alien 5. And it was set up to be this big thing that was going to follow aliens, kind of pretend the others didn't happen. Uh, released it as fan art. <coughs> fans took off on it. Got a meeting with Fox. Fox, based on his pitch, said, all right, let's do this. Supposedly, Ridley Scott got in and said, okay, hey, you know what, this is going to conflict with what we've got all mapped out for the Prometheus films. They originally said, well, let's make a little change to his, well, and then it became, well, before this can move forward, we better do Covenant. Because we're not going to shelve Covenant, because we're, we'd be at five years at that point to do it. So they moved ahead with Covenant, and the which became, well, we've got a couple other films planned out. Blood Camp basically said, it's pretty much dead at this point, and now we're finding out it was never anything more than a 10-page treatment, and let's not forget the uh, re the less than stellar reactions to Chappie and Elysium, which absolutely tanked at the box office, pretty much filled any cloud he had. Yes, in fact. I remember 
Yes, mm -hmm. they're planning on moving forward from what we heard. No, no official announcement yet, but moving forward in the back there. And I'll come up to you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, they said at, when the Warcraft movie was being developed that there may be a Starcraft movie coming. Yeah, see, again, these are all things. You will probably hear updates on that at BlizzCon because what happened was Warcraft absolutely tanked at the U.S. box office. It was not pretty. It did well overseas, but it was enough to the point where they they got gun shy because they they were. I mean, this thing had gone through a couple different directors. This had been planned for years, and when it didn't get the reaction that they were hoping for, it made them think twice. Sorry, I saw. Yeah. Is there any new information on Warcraft? Not really anything worth talking about. Yeah, Merlin. I'm sorry, which one? Hard to say. He hasn't told me yet. Sorry, and, and, you know, he wouldn't, he, they always talk in circles anyway, but I think he probably has to go ahead. Hi, did you spill anything about Anne McCaffrey's Dragon Riders? Nothing really. Yeah, it's just, you know, the, the, the problem is those are, our people, uh, fantasy films don't always do well. They're hard to sell. They do better overseas than you do. In the back? You know, that's a great question because that's kind of dovetailing on what he had asked earlier about the original content. Um, there have been some articles lately that have not been, Pixar was always Teflon. They, you know, mm -hmm. could do no wrong. And in recent years, people have said, you know, The Good Dinosaur really wasn't that great. And uh, Inside Out was okay, but it didn't do this. And they're kind of looking at where they're at and they're like, well, <laughs> Coco's not exactly getting a huge response online, even though it's a ways from coming out. A lot of people say this looks like the Book of Life, and so on and so forth. And then over on the other side, you have Disney Studio, and there's Moana, and there's Frozen, and there's just hit after hit after hit. And there's a lot of talk that that's basically why Pixar is going back to the sequel route, because it's safe. It's the new franchises. Sure, they make money, but they haven't lit the world on fire like the other stuff did. And, you know, you look at it and you go, well, huh, Good Dinosaur 2, no. Oh, all right, we'll do Toy Story 4, we'll do The Incredible 2, The Incredibles 2, we'll sandwich those in between a new original film, mm -hmm. and just to be on the safe side, let's make sure Cars 3 is out this summer. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you mentioned about the Yes, which is frightening because. <laughs> <laughs> but see, but here's the, here's the thing. Now, I didn't watch a lot of the cartoons. Yes, I watched them, but you know, I was kind of at that age where I was kind of outgrowing the Transformers. And yes, I've watched all of the films. I've been to the press screenings for every single one of them. And my attitude on the Transformers is kind of like this. I'm not sitting here going, oh, give me, give me, give me another Transformers film. It's kind of like, eh, it's another Transformers film. Now, do I think they should stop the franchise? No. Because you know what you're going to get going in. You're going to get lots of slow motion running, lots of explosions, because that's Michael Bay's way. And you're going to get an overabundance of special effects with a pretty average, and if at times, meandering, meandering and maybe a little complicated storyline. And a new storyline. Right. But, like you said, they will sell toys. They will sell video games, and you know what? They're going to make money. And as long as people, especially in the foreign market, as long as they keep selling those things, they're going to keep making them. Yes? Sherlock Holmes 3. Sherlock Holmes 3, that is a great question. The plan is still to go forward with that. Uh, it's a matter of lining up their schedules. Apparently, they do have a script. Now, I do have to take a step back on this, and here's the, here's the caveat. Um, Guy Ritchie didn't do too well with The Man from Uncle, although he said it's still possible to do a sequel. King Arthur has so far been an absolute bomb. He is not exactly hot. Now, the fact that he has a reputation, the fact that, let's be honest, Jude Law and Robert Downey Jr., all they have to do is say, we will not do this without Guy Ritchie, and it's a done deal. The question is, 
aren't the studios ready to move forward? They have said the plan is still to do it. They were just waiting for the script. So, you know, it, it's kind of one of those that there's interest all around, but I'm kind of waiting for someone to say, yeah, absolutely, it's happening. Yeah. Any news of Venom in the MCU? That's the yo-yo question right now. We hear yes, then we hear no. So hard to say. I, at this point, I don't believe it is. That's kind of the way they're leaning. Yes? So. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Me? Yeah, go with me. Uh, so like, X-Files translated into a movie. Do you ever see, like, Fear the Walking Dead, Walking Dead, or Supernatural ever going into being a full-length movie? <coughs> or are there any, any talks about it? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, Walking Dead is losing its audience. The estimation I heard was they lost 30% of their audience. I'm going to say it right now. It's not proper. I'm, I'm beyond done with Fear the Walking Dead. I was so fed up with last season, I fast-forwarded through a couple of the last episodes because all I saw then was walking around on the compounds and I stopped and played at the moment the zombies came into play. I don't find the characters that interesting at all. I really don't give a rip if any of them will ever die. And personally, I think they've overstretched it way too much. And that's kind of the way I'm getting with The Walking Dead because it's like, and I, I'm going to say this, I don't read the comics, so, you know, don't, don't play with this, but it's like, every year, we've got to get to so-and-so, we've got to get to so-and-so, then they get to so-and-so, then the thing. Oh, this guy's a threat, let's eliminate the threat, okay, so we get rid of the farm, let's go to Terminus, oh, it is, sorry, then it was the governor, then it's the Terminus, let's replace, let's get rid of the governor, and now it's Negan, we get rid of, and it's like, I've seen this before, it's, you now you're, and then you're killing off characters I actually care about, and replace them with people I don't care about. And at this point, it's, are you really offering me anything new or are you just continuing to beat a dead horse because the ratings are there, but oh, guess what? Now you're losing your audience. And I think they need to take a step back and reinvigorate the franchise. Now, I'm not advocating this to happen. I don't think they should. I like the guy. I think he does a fantastic job of the role. But you're going to need something like knocking off Rick, knocking off Daryl. Something that people are going to say, wow, I did not see that coming. No. And, and change the location. You know, who is cutting the grass is what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I would love to know, I'm not a chemist, but how is this gasoline still viable? Right. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow. <laughs> yes. I should mention the TV stuff. Um, with Marvel and now, yeah. In the theaters and the TV. Yeah. The movie one, I'm told, kind of got put on the back shelf in favor of the TV stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. This has bothered me for a while. Um, with uh, the new uh, real life Disney movies, mm -hmm. do they plan on having, and more recent ones that have been made, do they have plans for those? And do Good they question. plan right, on having what? the uh, same question? characters? Disney, Disney's movies, live action versions. This is what I can tell you they've got. Let's see. No particular order. Um, Mulan, Jungle Book 2, Aladdin, Guy Ritchie's doing Aladdin. I do know that. Um, Lion King. Lion King, and there, there was, there was a, one. Um, a Little Mermaid. A Little Mermaid is the, next, is the other one that's in the, uh, in the mix right now. Yeah. And of course, they are still considering a sequel to Maleficent. Are, are they also thinking about using the same characters from those movies? Hard to say. Characters we don't know, but probably, and then they may add one or two, just, you know, voice out. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Vampire Hunter, Yeah, probably not. not probably haven't seen any Vampire Hunter stuff. Yeah? Uh, Monsters for Sailing 2, no, DreamWorks has no plans for that. Okay, so last question here, and then I'll take the rest at the table when we're getting your swag and <coughs> wrap the stuff ready. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, ask a question. Yeah, or, or. Yep. Uh, Beetlejuice is not going to happen. There were rumors about that, but they said, you know, it's mostly people who are interested in it like to float around, oh, we're going to do a Beetlejuice movie, but the powers that be, uh, say there's nothing to it. As Michael Keaton said, if it was going to happen, it would have happened already. A long time ago. All right.